G'day guys, Adam Kogan here, and today I have William Leamberg. How are you, William? I'm well, thank you. I have a question for William. Mm -hmm. Where is the cloud architect? He's right here. Okay, excellent. <laughs> but uh, on a software project, yeah. typically uh, you want the best software architecture and the best cloud architecture. That's right. And Azure is a bit of a beast. Yeah. So when you kick off a project and there's a couple of guys on the project, mm -hmm. uh, what is the missing piece to that? Um, the missing piece is the developers mainly focus just on software, not the cloud architecture and choosing the right services in Azure. And that's where the cloud architect comes in. Make sure that they choose the right services, get that approved by the product owner. And then you know, once you've provisioned the software, uh, sorry, the, the cloud architecture and the resources mm -hmm. in Azure, the developers can just focus on the development and get the software done. Okay, so that the reason for the way that we often do a project where instead of just having a couple of devs on the project, mm -hmm. we try to have a cloud architect mm -hmm. who's doing a day a week, right. or if that's not appropriate, a day a fortnight or a day a month, mm -hmm. but you have one piece, uh, or you have one architect who's looking at the cloud pieces. That's right. Um, so what happens during that time that you, you know, you're doing that day a week or whatever? Oh, so that day a week, uh, you know, we make sure that the software, um, the services that we're using allows the software to scale. We run our load tests. Uh, we also run penetration testing for security yep. and we look at cost. So we're making right. sure that we're not over provisioning on our resources and also not under provisioning so that we're just trying to hit the, hit right. the mark on uh, our spending. So the important thing that I often will tell a client this, a day of your time or a cloud architect's time in the beginning mm -hmm. can actually save like $100,000 later on, can't it? It can, yes. There's yes. a lot of dollars you can turn up to the maximum that when you don't need to. <laughs> yes. And also, if the developers are developing like their .NET Core application mm -hmm. and they have to change those services later on, that's quite a bit of work. It can be a lot of work, yes. So swapping, for instance, from a SQL Server to a Cosmos DB, mm -hmm. there will be some work involved. And you know, uh, to gain that performance or that elastic scalability from Cosmos, um, to get there from SQL Server, it'll take a little while. And you know, if you knew that upfront, if the Cloud Architect pointed out mm -hmm. the, uh, the best service to use would have been Cosmos, you could have saved a lot of money. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's about using the right services, so right. the right tech, so nothing gets thrown away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about choosing the right data stuff. That's right. Uh, the, uh, after you've sorted out the data story, mm -hmm. then it's the security story, or do you do that earlier? Uh, also, security we tend to do right at start as well. We know if you're going to use Azure AD, B2C, uh, Identity Server, we, we choose that upfront. Okay. Yeah. And then the performance, is, is that early or late? Uh, Initially, we make sure we choose uh, a web API if we need to for mm. an always on type uh, application mm. or a serverless application that needs burst scalability. If it's to get used once a month or um, you know, infrequently during the day, then uh, with a lot of uses. So we can use Azure Functions, for instance, scales it really wide mm. and scales it back down when, it's, when there's no usage. And that way, again, we only pay for what we need uh, instead of a sort of fixed rate even when there's no usage. Right, and then so you've got nice ar cloud architecture, nice software architecture, mm -hmm. and then at the end, you have the go live audit. What's That's that right. thing? Yeah, so the go live audit will come in and you know, compare what we have at the end of the project mm -hmm. to what we agreed on at the start, and just make sure that everything is performing. We can scale, we run our load tests, uh, we run penetration testing for security, and monitor the cost. So we're making sure that before we go live, there's no sort of, um, a budget blowouts or anything right. on our cloud spending. Okay. Right. So everything right. should be go good to go for the go live. Okay. So that is fantastic. So uh, now you know uh, that you want to get a cloud architect in the project early on, even if it's just uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you just really need to have that. And at the end, you have the go live audit with the three mm -hmm. horsemen. You know, uh, you know, cost like mm -hmm. the the spend ops uh, performance. That's right. And um, security. Uh, Security, yes. That's right. So there you have it. Um, this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.